Friends, welcome back here in the week of August 22nd to part two of a podcast that in some ways it's actually part four. The first two parts were in June where Jamie and Alex and Alan on the team and I were in the studio in June, the 20th and 27th of June, talking about reserves, soul care, resilience, how we doing. And I think some of the vulnerability and candor of that podcast was an incredible gift to our listeners to just let people go, oh, wow, even even those guys who seem to have a real life with God, wow, even them. Uh, So then we came back last week to catch up, honestly, openly to say, so how are you doing now? And if you haven't listened, I, honestly, I'd go back to June 20th and listen <laughs> yeah. to that podcast, listen to the 27th of June, then jump to August 15th, and then pick up with this one, because they are a sequence. They are a conversation that I think is the conversation of the hour. I think it's that important and that close to human need right now. And we've been riffing on reserve tanks and refreshment from summer, but is it enough? And as we look towards fall, will it be enough? And that's kind of where we've been going. And we just got to the end last week when I was saying, Jesus was being pretty insistent with me through the summer that absolutely, John, you know, go out to dinner, enjoy it, have so much fun. It's not enough. Hmm. And he just kept shepherding me back and back from sort of refreshment to something deeper, to true restoration in him and through him and through a deeper life in him. And we needed to kind of pause at that point and come back and pick up this week. And before we started recording, Alex, you were beginning to reflect on. Yeah, John, I thought something that was in my heart as we were doing the last recording, you mentioned it's a unique hour on the earth that we're living in. And that there are things happening in the kingdom and spiritual things that are happening. And I was linking that to that lethargy and that slow erosion toward the epicenter Mm -hmm. of our life with God. I don't think that's just a natural thing that's happening. That's something that's happening in a lot of people's lives and therefore something that's that's happening spiritually in this hour on the earth. And Mm -hmm. I I wondered if you would be willing to say more on that. Yeah, it is so close because it's part of the fatigue. When you are standing in a river, it takes an enormous amount of energy just to stand, Mm -hmm. just to keep your balance and kind of lean into the current. Or or if you're at the ocean, right? And there's some kind of cross current or riptide or just to pull the ebb and flow of waves on a normal day. You've got to kind of center yourself and kind of get your legs uh, really anchored. And it takes extra just to maintain your normal. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. The fatigue that people are feeling are because the world literally is in a time of transition. Mm -hmm. And I think people can name it. They can like, they look at and they go, you know what? Politics is just never going to be the same again. And right. And the workforce, it's just never going to be the same again. Like things are changing. The world is changing and kind of tell like education, it's just different now. And how do we do it? And everyone has the sense that things are different. Things are changing. And if that were just true on a natural level, that alone is exhausting Mm -hmm. because you're, what is your new normal? What's coming? What is the economy going to do? Are we going to go into a full-blown recession Or are we going to kind of navigate the inflation and then come out of that? Like, how long will that take? And buying power, wage collapse, all that stuff. So people sense it. They see it. They can see it in the economy. They can feel it. But larger things are taking place. And we are in a time of transition. We are literally in the transition from one age to the next. We, and, and folks, even if you want to kick this down the road a hundred years and say, well, yeah, maybe the return of Christ, you know, it's not 500 years away, but maybe it's still a hundred years away. You go, you're in that moment. Like you are in an upheaval of transition. Mm. Things are changing. Mm. And 
the other thing that's operating in the moment is what we've been describing for almost a year now on the podcast, and that is desolation mm. is sweeping the earth, and it's trying to get in in any way it can, and it will come in very mild forms of, eh, you know, just the lethargy, apathy, creep. I don't know. I, mm-hmm. babe, let's. I don't. I don't want to go to church this Sunday. Let's just. Let's just stay home. And it, it'll. It'll come in very mild ways, or it'll come in very, very severe ways of loss of hope, loss of joy, loss of a sense of God, and many dear folks walking away from Jesus right now, and feeling, feeling. Like it's a natural decision, feeling that there's a lot of reason behind it, but not aware that, oh, oh no, you are subject right now hmm. to massive spiritual forces in the world. And it's all part of the upheaval. It's all part of the, this time of transition in it. And we were, I was trying to describe this to the, to the gang here before we started recording about, I think we're in transition. And isn't that like a significant part of labor? (laughs) Yes. Yes, it is. (laughs) As the only female in here, uh, when you said that, I was instantly back in labor with my first, who's now 14, which was a very long labor. In transition, you hear about it, but you don't necessarily know you're in it. There's not this definitive moment of labor where, right. oh, I'm in transition. But the intensity picks up exponentially. And when I went through that with my daughter, that was the moment where I started crying out to everyone in the room, my midwife, my husband, my friend who was there, can't I just have a break? I just need a break over and over again. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. I just, I just need, need a, break. a break. Yes. Yeah. Please. Isn't mm. that what it feels like? Like I almost said those same words to myself this last year. Yeah. Like I just want I a, just break. a break. Like give me a break. Like I want to get off the roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. And just get a little time. I'll come back, but just let me have a break. Mm -hmm. We are globally, historically, in this moment, in transition. And there's enormous amounts of upheaval and instability. And when you are in instability, everything in your humanity wants to go back to what you knew. Can we just go back? Let's just get, I just want to get back. I want to. And I found myself even fantasizing this summer about summers long ago. Mm. And can't we just get back to that, mm. honey? Can't, mm. Let's just go back to the Tetons. We haven't been in a while. Let, let's recover. Okay, mm. that's very, very human. It's very, very natural in times of transition and upheaval to look for the known, the certain, that kind of thing. Yeah. Can I just have a break? Mm-hmm. Give me a break. And some people are experiencing a break. We all did. We, we got away for different things. We had some friends over this summer. It was so lovely. Out to dinner, laughter. Yeah, there was mm-hmm. natural graces, natural assistance, but it is not sufficient for the hour. And it is sure not sufficient to deal with the spiritual forces that these guys aren't going home. <laughs> like They're not going to say, sure, you can have a break. Let's all just call a timeout for six months and we'll pick this global war up in in six months. You know, like it's now, it's here, we're living through it. And that's why it's so important for us to, we were calling it Protect the Epicenter. I think that was even the title of the the June 27th podcast was Protect Uh the Epicenter, protect your life with God, protect your life with God in so many different ways. Like, where are you going for relief right now? And is it ultimately taking you into a deeper experience with God? Or is it just relief? You know, that's, and so that's why he kept, you know, I kept getting one fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the book, Resilient, I like how you talk about this topic of the epicenter and how basically if we try to recreate Eden without God at the center, it's always ultimately 
hollow. Like or violent or, and oppressive. Yes. A lack of hope ultimately. But if we protect the epicenter and put God there at the foundation and at the very middle, then we can weather whatever's to come. And so that's why in last week's podcast, you know, I was saying, yeah, my main tank is pretty full, but the reserve is to me what I see as the epicenter of everything. It's what is there that that gets me through everything I need. And that's what I need to get busy in a good way, not in a striving way, but I need to really focus on now because if I don't, that main tank is going to be gone again. Mm -hmm. And so as you bring up the age we're in, that's the most important thing. What are the ways that we can draw close to God? Because Mm -hmm. without that, the other things are nice and they're distractions and there's beauty, but it's not the main thing that's going to get us through. Well, mm-hmm. if if I simply ask you guys, go go back to your summer. We we were talking about that in last week's podcast. Go back to your summer. Go back to the parts of your vacation and staycation and whatever it was you all were doing. What was the best part? What was the most nourishing thing this summer? Like, what was the deepest nourishment? Where did that come from? For me, it came from beauty and nature. I had a really, really beautiful trip with my best friend for three days up into the mountains, Mm. specifically to do a hike. And the mountains in Colorado in the summer are exquisite. Like it's just immersion of beauty. And in this case, also water and waterfalls. And that was that for me. If if I had one thing to go back to this summer that was good, Mm. that's what I would go yeah. back to mm-hmm. yeah yeah and say um the reconnection with god like it was deeply nourishing to me this summer and especially through just doing the 30 days app but also my reconnection with mel mm-hmm. like for us those couple weeks we were away together in alaska we were very needed and it just brought back the simplicity of being together in our Mm. marriage and Mm. we are facing big transition with Zoe going off to college and, but, um, yeah, uh, it it was, it was very helpful to slow down and, and have the time. We, we didn't do a ton. We had some really cool things we did while we were in Alaska, but a lot of it was just being together. And so that combination of, together with God in the mornings and the evenings while we were there. And then throughout the day together with Mel Mm. was pretty nourishing for Mm. me. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. I can relate to that. The beach trip was the highlight of my July by far, but it wasn't the ocean that was the main thing. That was the atmosphere of the setting where I was able to reconnect with God Uh, in a much more tangible way, just breathe, uh, slow down and have soul care. And my favorite part was in the home we were staying in, they had a sunroom and Kelly and I would wake up before the kids and pour a cup of coffee and just sit and have hours to laugh and talk. Or maybe some of the mornings we just read in the same room together. Mm -hmm. But that reconnection with her and that reconnection with God, that's what was filling the tank. And the ocean was the bonus setting that it happened in. That's what I most remember and what's going to get me through as we go forward. So the natural graces help. The supernatural graces are irreplaceable Mm -hmm. because the ocean was lovely, but you're not there there anymore. That's right. Yeah. And the waterfalls were lovely, but you're not there anymore. Yeah. The temptation, though, is when can I do that again? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I get it. Me too. It's like, okay, how can we plan <laughs> to get back to that place that was beautiful or that evening that was lovely? Or let's get back to that restaurant. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? The natural graces are necessary, but insufficient. The supernatural graces are irreplaceable. And, and by that, I mean 
the practices daily that bring us into union with God. Mm -hmm. And those supernatural graces are accessible regardless of whether you have access to the natural graces, Mm. right? It's so important. You look at the life of Paul. Yeah. And he had to lean into the supernatural graces. He yes. talks about being imprisoned and shipwrecked and just yeah. the litany of mm-hmm. things he went through, but he had yeah. he had a immense grasp on the supernatural graces. Yes. And the forces of the hour that we're living in are actually happy to leave people with only the natural graces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just need a vacation. You you just need to finish mm-hmm. that, you know, that, that spare room you're building. You just need to, you know. You need to take up music again because the war is against the epicenter and the epicenter is our life with God and the things that actually bring communion, the things that actually bring that deep, well, catascuo is what Jesus calls it in Luke when he says, pray for the strength to escape this stuff. Catascuo, Greek there, is only used twice in the New Testament, only used twice in the scriptures, and it's Jesus both times. And here he's urging us to ask for it. It's a supernatural strength given by the presence of God in us. The only other time he uses it is when he's talking about the launch of the church, and he says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, will not catascuo against it. So it's like a prevailing strength, a conquering strength, almost like a military strength. I will not be overcome by all that's taking place, by this time of transition and all the upheaval. I am in transition. Can I just have a break? (laughs) I just need a break. That's why the supernatural graces, are they're, they're the irreplaceable ones. And they're available whether or not you can get to the ocean, the lake you know, out of town. So as you guys look towards your fall, sorry to do this to you right now, but (laughs) I need you to look at your fall. Kids back in school, kids leaving home, you know, projects, events. How would you coach yourself? What is your counsel to yourself? Isn't that what you're here for, John? (laughs) (laughs) You know yourself better than me. Something that God has been uh, talking to me and showing me recently, which is, I think, a really good analogy through something I love, is I garden. And right now, my garden, it's the it's it's August, right? And it's exploding, and it's it requires very little work right now. I can just go out and stare at it for a while, and nothing needs to be done except making sure it gets enough water in Colorado. But it wasn't that way back in March when you're starting to do soil prep and planting tiny little seeds indoors to cultivate them. It's a lot of work up front. There's a lot of cultivation. There's a lot of preparation. And the end result is this thing growing in and of itself that that requires very little from me. But since, um, and I spoke about this in the previous podcast um, last week, that that this summer was a way for me to get some space around the epicenter. And now it's time to start that prep work, that cultivation of the epicenter. Of, of your soul. Of my life with God. Yes. So that it is flourishing down the road. And doesn't, I mean, it's always going to require of me because it's the center of my soul, but it's that prep work that is challenging. It's hard. But now that I have some space where things were pushed back from the epicenter, now it's God saying, Mm -hmm. let's go in here and let's tend to that. Let's get that to flourish and grow. So that's where I am. And I, I actually, I don't know if I have the answer of what that looks like, but that's where God's taking me. And that's what I'm going to need this fall in this time in order to, to grow. Yes. Yes. So Teresa Vivia talked about the heart as the garden. 
and she talked about literally tending it Mm -hmm. and cultivating it so that you can have a rich intimacy with Christ there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. she would be very it isn't proud of you. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you, (laughs) Teresa. (laughs) It isn't um it feels overwhelming when you start. And I, I think that's where I am right now is what does this look like? Um, in mm. order to get it mm. to be the garden that I want. But but again, to have had some space around that area is a really good start. Yes. A really good start. Yeah. How would you coach yourself, guys? So I think um, I, I've been kind of processing this a little bit already, but as I've been well aware of uh, what's coming with got a event at the end of the month, drop Zoe off at school. Then we got a couple more events coming in the fall. So I've, I've been thinking about, oh man, things are ramping up. And I, you know, as I came back into August, I could feel myself going, oh, well, it's over. Get back, you know, like, <laughs> and just, um, and for, for me, what I, what I need, what God has said I need, um, as I've kind of brought that to him is to stay present. And, um, and so that's, that's where I'm landing right now is, is to go, no, wait, summer's actually not over. Like we're still in August. Mm. It's still beautiful outside. Mm -hmm. And I can lose all that if I kind of spend all my energy looking at what's coming instead of being present to where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think for me entering into the fall, I want to stay present. I want to take it a day at a time and not, you know, be jumping forward to things that are coming. And I think what that then allows is for me to be present with God. So it's not just the idea of me being present, but it's me present with God because it's the only place God interacts with us is in the present Mm -hmm. right and so you know i what i've been doing i've i finished the 30 days app and what it's led to is kind of a little a little bit of there are days where i'll go man i i really need to go back to that eden one and i'll pop that on that day but a lot of days what it looks like is i'm just kind of doing it on my own yes where it's either I've woken up that morning and that'll be the first thing I do and I'll take 10 minutes and I'll release everyone and everything. I'll receive God's love yes. and I'll love Jesus back and then I'll, I'll dive into the depths of, okay, Jesus, where are you in me? And what do you want to show me this morning? And, and having that time I can feel it not only maintaining my tanks, but filling my tanks. Mm. And I know that's going to be needed through Mm. the whole fall. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Part of the goal of inviting people into the 30 days experience was exactly that, to establish a rhythm Mm -hmm. that will carry you forward Right. In your life with God, because it's the dailies, it's our practices, it's the habits that change our lives. Those are the things that work. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. For me, fall is a really busy season in general with Wild at Heart, with school and our kids. And I find when I get really busy, I try to fit God in to my day. That's the hope is, yeah, I need time with God, and I hope I can find time somewhere in the day to do that rather than start with God. Mm-hmm. And if if I put it off, inevitably it happens at best right before I go to bed, which isn't super helpful for the day that I just mm-hmm. lived mm-hmm. Yeah. in my own strength. Mm-hmm. It's rescue at oh, that point. Mm-hmm. Right. It's looking for relief during the day. And then hopeful rescue, but how do you rescue the day you just lived, you know? And God and I had a really interesting conversation about this last week where I was saying, I know, I know, I know, God, I really want to start with you, 
sometimes it's just a little tricky to try to find that time. And God playfully just asked, what about coffee? And it was like an arrow to the heart (laughs) because I never have to worry about whether I'm going to start with coffee or not. Like I get that done. I could not make it very far into the day for better or for worse without some really strong coffee in the morning. I love that. And it happens a hundred percent every day of the year and either make it the (laughs) night before, put it in the machine so that it's ready or that morning before I do anything else, I'm brewing the coffee and I never forget, never go without it. And it was just a playful way for God to say, yeah, you can do it if, you, if it's the main thing and not a pressure thing, but just find a few minutes to start with me when you grab that cup of coffee and it'll look different every day, but, but just start there. And so that for me is what I need to do this fall. I need to just set a rhythm where God is not the rescue. God is not at best the last thing but he's the first thing. And even if that's five minutes out on the deck, if it's on the drive in, whatever it is, it, but it's, it's making that the priority of the morning. Yeah. It's the things that become habitual that actually shape our lives. So gang, we are in a time of transition and a great deal of what your soul is feeling and experiencing from the fatigue to the pressure, to the desires for relief and give me a break for heaven's <laughs> sake. That's all because we're in this global moment of transition. And in times of transition, it actually doesn't help to try and go backwards. Mm-hmm. Going back to whatever the good old days were in your imagination mm-hmm. doesn't work. You have to follow God. You have to stay very close Mm -hmm. to God. It's the only thing that works. You follow the cloud. This Mm -hmm. is the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. That was the whole lesson for Israel was stay with me. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. The cloud moves, you move. Well, the cloud is moving, folks. We're not going back to the good old days. And, And so stay close. Stay close. If you haven't picked up 30 days, if you haven't, it's in the pause app. It's so gentle. It's so mm-hmm. gracious. It's so freaking beautiful. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I if you finished it, do it again. Are you kidding me? There's yeah. no way that you've gotten everything out of it that you could get. And, and if you, you're kind of stop and start, keep, keep starting. Keep, keep picking it back up. And even consider doing one session more than once. Do it in the morning as your coffee, yeah. but then play it on your way into work again. Like the soul needs union mm-hmm. with God. The one thing that I did with the 30 days was did it by week. So mm. it was week one, week mm. two. Week, yeah. And so I did it Monday through Friday. Yes. It took Saturday, Sunday off. Yes. And there was mm. something about that for, for me because I'm kind of that personality that like, you know, get into something and get halfway through and get bogged down and and not finish. Yes. But there was something about just the weekend pause from it and coming back to it and doing the next week that felt like a good rhythm and it was easy. Yeah. That way. Yeah. Cool. Um, instead of, oh man, I'm, you know, I had something happen on Saturday morning and I forgot to do it. No, no. Like it just yeah. It fit my rhythm of life a little cleaner that yeah. way. We need such deep groundedness in this hour. That's irreplaceable. The natural graces are helpful, but that's irreplaceable. 